pressing F4 or the conveyor button takes us to the conveyor control screen. This one is straightforward. We just have four standard switches right from the existing parts list, each controlling a different one of these tags. There's also a graphic indicator for each that tracks the same tag to help highlight the status of the switch. Each of these switches is also mapped to a function key here, so you can either use the function key or the switch on the screen. And there's the usual home button, which is mapped to F1, to get us back to the home screen. The recipe button takes us to a screen that allows us to change the bottle size on each lane and also takes us to a screen where we can adjust the mix of each flavor. Looks like this screen is screen 10 and the mix screen is screen 14. Notice that the two screens are both the same color. Keeping similar functions the same color helps the user navigate around complicated projects. Let's take a look at these two screens, screens 10 and 14. First, screen 10, the bottle screen. Here we have a dynamic bitmap button. Well, that doesn't make any sense. A dynamic bitmap just monitors a tag. It doesn't change anything. But if we move that out of the way, we see that underneath it, there's a recipe button. It's this recipe button that's doing all of the work. Since a recipe button can only display text, though, we put a dynamic bitmap on top of it to give us a graphics representation. That's important. With the Seymour Micro, you can stack objects to create any effect you want. Be careful with stacking of objects, though. Only the topmost object under a bitmap will function. Let's do a little side example down here on screen 18. Here on screen 18, we have a bitmap covering two objects. This push button sets the alarm tag and this switch that's on top of it changes the cola tag. Because the switch is sitting on top of the push button, if we click on this area under this graphic, only the cola tag will get modified. The alarm tag won't. The portion of the alarm push button that was exposed in this region will set the alarm tag. Let's try that real quick. So again, most of this area is covered by the cola tag. So when I click on this graphic, as you can see over here, only the cola tag is changing. If I move my cursor up to a region where the alarm button was exposed, then sure enough the alarm tag gets set, but the cola doesn't. So that's important to understand. The only objects that work are the ones that are visible under a graphic. If we look at the recipe in this recipe button, we can see that it's selecting the different lanes, but what it's also doing is it's deselecting the other buttons. Here are the different size selects. It's turning this button on, and it's turning the other three buttons off. That gives us the effect of a radio button, but the flexibility of a recipe. The lane numbers themselves, these are all just static text. So we have static text and dynamic bitmaps sitting on top of recipe buttons. Let's look at the sizes. It's another dynamic bitmap, which only monitors a tag. It doesn't change anything. So chances are, if we move that out of the way, we'll find yet another recipe button. This one works just like the other one. It sets its tag to on and the other three tags to off, giving us the effect of a radio button, but unlike the radio button, this allows us to use any graphic we want as an indicator. That's a really neat trick. Over here, we have a static bitmap and some static text all sitting on top of a screen change button. That screen change button takes us over to screen 14 where we can adjust the mix. Let's go pop down to screen 14. On this screen, we're using the same trick as before to create the effect of a radio button with these four items. If we look at this, we have a rectangle, which I'm going to push to the bottom to get it out of our way. We have some static text, a dynamic bitmap, if I move the dynamic bitmap and the static text out of the way, there's our recipe button again. And if you look at it, the recipe is updating the recipe, but it's also turning off the other three items and turning himself on. That gives us the effect of a radio button and updates the recipe for all the ingredients in this recipe. The results are displayed using numeric entry objects. That's important to understand. The numeric entry is being used as a display. That way you can both display the current tag and change it. Please note that this is a very simple example. For this to work in a real application, 
there would need to be some PLC interaction with this numeric entry result. It's real easy for us to hard code values using a recipe button like we're showing in these examples. Actually getting the PLC to interact with these numeric entry results is a subject for an entire video all by itself. We'll have to add that one to the list. The rest of these items are all just static text. Uh, we have our home icon over our screen change button to take us back to screen one. And our bottle size button is a screen change which takes us back to screen 10. Again, on top of that, we're stacking some static bitmaps, some little bottles, and some static text. That's really important to understand with the Micro Seymour. You can stack all these objects to create any effect you want. So let's go back to our simulator one more time and take a look at this. So remember, when you click on this button here, it clears the other buttons via the recipe to give us the effect of a radio button. Same thing back here on the mix screen. If I click on one, it clears all the others to give us that effect of a radio button. And of course, each time I do this, it updates the recipe on the right. If I click on this display, it allows me to update these numbers. Well, that's it for this video. Be sure to check out the other videos in this series. And as always, please send us any topics you would like to see covered, or any other comments for that matter. We appreciate the feedback.